going live in one, two, three. I think we're live already. Hello. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm here today with the sidereal astrologer Krasi Atasio, who is going to lead us through the month of November for all the 12 signs predictions for the 12 signs plus indications of what is going to happen uh, for the world. Hi, Krasi. Hello, Ada. Hello, everyone. Yes, we thought of re um, recording this a little bit earlier than usual, exactly because of these very important events which are taking place in November. Not necessarily negative events, but important for the world, for the humanity. And of course, one of them is the third eclipse of this year, which is happening on the 19th of November and is on the very same axis, which we have this year always. Say, so really, this is the axis of Scorpio Taurus. So emphasis on this axis of money, of power, Scorpio um, Taurus. So on the 19th of um, November. Where is this happening? We just discussed with Wada, obviously on both zodiacs, sidereal and tropical. This is happening in the Pleiades, the Seven Sisters, or, or just at the end of our goal, the Medusa and the Pleiades. So yeah, the witches... They call it between a hard rock and... A, <laughs> how is it called? <laughs> it was like between two really tough spots. <laughs> Indeed, indeed, uh, yes, it is tough, but the Pleiades are seven witches, and they're not necessarily bad. They are witches. They give us wisdom, which comes from wisdom, right? It doesn't come from anything. It has a negative connotation now, but this is not correct. It, it is about wisdom. So these eclipses, which have already started last year, last year we had six half of them on the same axis, and people know already how this feels. Another thing is that to speak about eclipse now and expecting results now is also wrong because we can have impact of eclipse that can have duration of like next three months to three years, even longer. So that's why to, to be very specific about eclipse of such nature, Pleiades is also hard. But um, however, is clearly- Pleiades known as the Weeping Sisters? I've checked horoscopes of people who have strong Pleiades, the sun or ascendant or moon, and all of them were usually quite occult. They had occult abilities, yeah. in, but they had some tragedy in life. Like, for example, there was one guy who uh, died in a car crash. Another, the, the horoscope of a child, his child I saw, and the sun was on the Pleiades, and the sun ruled both the parents, and both the parents died in a car crash when the child was three months old. So sometimes it can lead to some painful experiences the Pleiades because it's about weeping kind of a cult it makes you get close to death almost like experience those forbidden occult topics life death you know I've, I've just seen it in horoscopes of people who are around the end of Taurus tropically that tend to experience such such kind of cries or drama that leads to more cry, uh, tears it is. And remember the story of the Pleiades, one of them, one of the sisters, I think Merope is the one who disappeared. I think she was in love in a, with a, in a human uh, person and this was not allowed. And, and the story led to her disappearance. Mm -hmm. So obviously what above, so below disappearance. Yeah, this is one of the effects, of course, of the Pleiades. And also in the ancient Babylonian mythology, these were the six or seven demons Subitu, and they were just very, very severe. They were absolutely fierce. They were, these were the demons of Nergal, of Mars, who mm -hmm. would defend Mars, but they were, uh, if you would be able to convince Mars to change his mind, the Subitu demons never. These are the Subitu demons. So we're talking about serious, well, serious um, eclipses, but this is not the first one. So ladies and gentlemen, don't be worried. Rising? Is dar darkness rising of some sort? Well, it's rising already, but it's good. I think, I think balance water, it is balanced. And in the, this, is, um, this is balanced because this is eclipse of opposition, some mm -hmm. uh, moon, it's a balance. We need to find the balance. We, it, it is our lesson after all that we're going through. This is axis of money and power. Obviously, worldwide, 
this will have impact on the financial system, not for good. It wouldn't lead probably to where we want because, because the eclipse is a negative event as a whole. The eclipses are not benevolent, but- Remember what happened the day they rolled out the miracle cure was exactly the day there was an eclipse on the, we were discussing it with you live here. There was an eclipse on the tail of the scorpion. Oh that yes, I forgot. Mm -hmm. like, oh my God, that's not a good omen <laughs> where this is going. And it, it's been quite scary with the results, how many people have died. And, uh, everyone knows someone that has died from this, unfortunately, almost <laughs> some family or someone that's been very badly injured. Uh, I, I know at least five people, so <laughs> I'm it's sure. A war. It's a war. I know people too, and I have clients which are telling me uh, my family member took it and got, got, yes, very sad cases. Yeah. Well, people, it's balance, and the balance is not only in the light forces, neither um, in the balance. We have to, we have to be able to see through and, and have, have our learning experience through without fears, without fears. And I do think that people will not be that afraid this time because this is also, see also Jupiter participates in a sextile with the oh. eclipse, you know. So, so somehow uh, the thing is that um, Venus will be weak and we expect her to be great savior and she is in Sagittarius. Now here comes the interesting part of course, we are expecting, and you had a video about this, I think, Wada, or you wrote in Facebook, I forgot, but I saw that you informed people about this. It was the heliacal rise of Mars, I think, on the 21st of December. So we're still waiting for Mars to become visible in order to have a closure of this cycle and to start another cycle. Well, Mars is Scorpio, what for cycle? Maybe we should speak separately about this only. <laughs> New cycle, it starts in Scorpio, yay. My God, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so um, Mars is cycle, no, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mars in, uh, but this is in December. Before that, what is happening? Mars will be in Libra, fallen, invisible, totally unpredictable. But if we take on mundane level that M Mars is ruling the police force, let's say, and we have, look what we have and we can um, reason this together. So Mars in the seven degrees of Libra, degrees which are, uh, Saturn finds joyful, his hidden place, Libra, and is squaring Saturn in Capricorn with Jupiter. And then um, Pluto is also about to, Pluto now is already uh, direct. This is important for our collective uh, consciousness and collective karma. But uh, we'll have Mars who will be squaring Mars, uh, Saturn and Mars is fallen. If Mars is ruling the police state, the police force, I mean, and is fallen, they also cannot coordinate perfectly the totalitarian actions that they try to impose on people. There will be total lack of coordination. You will see how their own police force will not be able to operate against people. This is one thing which I see. Mm -hmm. But Saturn direct in November, Jupiter direct in November, squared by Sun and Mars in Libra and Venus not very helpful from Sagittarius. So this is the situation. So yes, how I... Yeah, Tell lot. me, how do you, what is your reasoning on that square, oh. invisible Mars, fallen? With, with the square Saturn, Jupiter, and, and Uranus. <laughs> it will square and Uranus. Oppose Uranus as well. So. Yeah, T-square on the sky. Tension, mm -hmm. lack of organization, police force which will not serve them entirely. But the police force will not serve the, the matrix. Mm -hmm. and But they will attempt they will attempt to further the totalitarian measures mm -hmm. in November and more in December. Why? Because on the 4th or 5th of December, I forgot, Pluto is entering Sidereal Capricorn. And I will bring you back to, I think it was end of 2019, Wada, if I'm not mistaken, when we had the conjunction Saturn-Pluto in mm -hmm. Capricorn. No, in the last degrees of success, what happened? what we see now, it was behind. So we may have severe remembering, if you want, reminders of what happened. Mm -hmm. That's why people should not be, absolutely not be afraid. This is a turning point. 
12, for our the worst <laughs> totalitarian <laughs> maybe not attempts more as attempts i believe more well, attempts. let me let me remind people what happened when pluto entered the tropical capricorn in 2008 this was when the banks collapsed that was the big uh, one of the big institutions pluto can destroy those uh institutions as well banks corporations and now entering sidereal capricorn I think it will further escalate this process, but exactly. uh, Pluto is about total control as well. So uh, basically, I think that they will destroy themselves because Pluto is rules is connected to Scorpio. The Scorpio is the one that can kill itself with its own poison and tell you know that this this is the animal. Sometimes it can a Scorpion can kill itself, you know, self destruct. That's how I see it with Pluto entering sidereal Capricorn. Now they will escalate the control to crazy exactly. levels which will and they'll destroy themselves <laughs> exactly like a tumor because what 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 we spoke with you before recording this remember master ben seduno said the following pluto cannot tolerate lie and because the matrix is is built on a lie Yeah. Pluto is not tolerating lie. Yes, they will further the matrix. They will further the, they will try at least attempt to further <laughs> the matrix, the control, but not for long. That's why I'm saying I see this yeah. as a turning point and the turning point will be furthered with Mars becoming visible in Scorpio and then will become interesting, but this will leave for, for December. But for this, we, this deserves separate heavy analysis. <coughs> yeah, <laughs> that would be. Fast. But the thing is, this is a, so. So, ladies and gentlemen, by no means be afraid. By no means accept the bad thing. <laughs> you know what I mean. By no means be afraid, because this is what um, this is what is um, necessary. <laughs> yes, no, uh, because we are not born with fears. The fears are imposed on us. Absolutely no reason. Be fearless. Be fearless because also uh, Pluto, Capricorn, um, Saturn in uh, Capricorn, Jupiter, this is also something very strong. It's a power, except whether you take it as a power in your hands uh, or you take it as um, fear. It is to both extremes, Wada. I see it as really going to, 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 to opt for both extremes. Yes, they, can, they would try to impose further regulations, restrictions, limitations, L let them, let them. The cancer also spreads and then destroys uh, naturally itself. So this, is, yeah. this was my brief overview. What do you think, Wada? Oh, absolutely, sorry. Yeah, don't worry. I was, uh, yeah, I was just, uh, just maybe to say something because I was listening to Uh, Mattia De Stefano, he remembers, yeah, well. yeah. he was telling how in ancient uh, times when uh, Atlantis was in power uh, during the age of Virgo, and he said it was allowed to them then by time and the universe, the Virgo en energy, to globalize the whole planet and to be in control. But then when we entered, he says, the age of Leo, uh, 14,000 or 12,000 years ago, it was time for Atlantis no longer to be a global empire but they decided to keep their power, even though they, could, they, they would see by the stars that the time was shifting and it was time for autonomy of the colonies that they had all over the world. Uh, but they were trying to use totalitarian control over it. And actually he tells the story how uh, they destroyed themselves by that because the energy they send out everywhere trying to control it came back on them and destroyed Atlantis. And he said, when the time is ready, no one can stop it. Then God controls the times. And, uh, you know, I, I'm thinking we're entering, and he says, now, right now, we're the opposite of, uh, of Leo. We're in Aquarius age, and he said, they always have very similar themes. And he said, now it's, we're coming out of the age of Pisces. So it's no longer time for the global thing that we created. It's time for sovereignty. And he said, even if they try to do it, they cannot. <laughs> they they yeah. will for a little time, but it will destroy them. So um, I, I think uh, what you're talking about will be very similar as well. But things first, it will intensify the darkness. <laughs> And let's not forget that this thing like inertia, because even though... Um, 
this is an aspect which takes place now and it is valid for now and it is indeed turning point towards something better towards their own uh, destruction still don't forget don't expect changes overnight because there is this thing which is called inertia <laughs> and and yeah so this is the thing but really i repeat be fearless because Fears keep us in the lower vibrational uh, hurts, you know, and, and then we, um, we are very vulnerable then, really, because you remember what Tesla said, if you want to understand how the universe operates, think in terms of vibration, energy, and frequencies. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to vibrate now, absolutely not allowed to fall into, it is about the two extremes, choosing the high vibrations or the low. And let me finish this overview here because we have to talk about the 12 ascendants um, from both perspectives because people follow either the sidereal or the tropical zodiac. So from the sidereal point of view uh, and also from the tropical, and I'll be explaining each one of them. Or if you do not know at what time you're born and you do not know which your ascendant is, then you can apply your moon sign. So starting from... Uh, Aries, and keep it in mind, uh, of course, uh, we're talking about month of November, sidereal Aries or moon in Aries, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Taurus. So looking at in the month of November may not feel very harmonious for you, uh, simply because your ascendant truly will be fallen uh, in Libra, fallen. Would say that you may not feel exactly uh, very comfortable, very strong, very energetic, maybe also very ambitious. Don't worry, this is a temporary situation. Remember that in December, it will be a totally different picture for you once uh, Mars becomes visible in his very, very uh, powerful position in Scorpio, where also he's starting a new cycle. For you, this may also be another a new cycle. So, yes, you may feel like that. You may need to energize yourself to, uh, let's say, welcome the sun, or you may need to, to say to, uh, well, eat all in, uh, red food, chilies, garlic, too, indeed. This is the thing, because Mars, you may feel a little bit impulsive, you may feel a little bit nervous. Remember, this is a temporary situation which you may control. Um, also could be that you're going through, and this will intensify a bit in December, also in November, through career, um, through career modifications to say it, or career, um, career changes, be very disciplined because Saturn requires that. Actually, when you have a square between Mars and Saturn, you may need to be also very practical because this aspect brings practicality. So yes, be very, uh, practical, disciplined, diplomatic at work. There is where you may uh, have a little bit of um, well, a bit of uh, uh, issues. Now, Venus will be in a good position for you. In November, Venus is in Sagittarius, Sidereal. She will be training your ascendant. She will be like a savior for you. So the saving hand is there. Also, Venus will support work abroad or communication with people abroad or media work in this sense is also very positive. And then I forgot to mention in my overview, Mercury is visible, very, very potent, very, very powerful uh, in, in Virgo. And this is supporting your otherwise your routine work, talents, writing, studying. So in this sense, this is very fine, but still, Make sure that you uh, maintain your energy, your health, and um, yeah, wait until in December the energies change totally for better for you. And now we're looking at people who have Sidereal Ascendant Taurus or Moon in Taurus, or if you're following the modern tropical zodiac, this will be Gemini. Now, for you, in the whole month of November, Venus will be passing uh, through your eighth house, Sagittarius. This is not brilliant, but could be positive for the finances that you would receive through partnerships, contracts, agreements, or through uh, the finances of your partner. Also could enhance any esoteric work, spiritual work. So support the health of your partner as well. Now for you, a uh, very powerful position will have um, Mercury visible in your fifth house to support 
communication with children, any action which requires talents, gifts, creative knowledge, good for your gains. I think even that this particular Jupiter Saturn conjunction and Pluto uh, in, your, in your ninth house is fine for communication with people abroad, for even for finances that may um, be received through uh, other countries. Now your routine, your everyday work, be cautious with, uh, with colleagues, be responsible for your health, maintain healthy lifestyle and be responsible and be careful with colleagues. Don't trust people, unfortunately, I have to say. So this is basically for people with ascendant Taurus. And now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Sagittarius or moon in Sagittarius, or if you're following the modern uh, tropical astrology, this will be Cancer. Now your ascendant ruler um, is in November, part of November it will be visible in Virgo, perfectly uh, good for you. Then uh, Mercury enters um, uh, in the second month, actually no, after the first week of uh, November, enters your fifth house with the sun. With, uh, and this is very good because this will give you um, uh, desire to, 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 to do creative work, to study. Be a little bit though, um, careful and diplomatic and loving when you communicate with children, uh, simply because Mars is also in Libra. Uh, be also a bit attentive uh, towards children. Uh, but um, on the other hand, Venus, even though a little bit weaker in Sagittarius, uh, is on your seventh house. From there, will she will support your partnership. From there, she will support your romantic life, she will give you, she gives good aspect to your ascendant to save you, to, well, also to, to give you blessings. So this is very fine. And um, Jupiter, Saturn on, on the eighth house, this could be interesting for the finances of a partner. Uh, in general, this financially, this wouldn't be a bad uh, month for you, but Again, the, the emphasis is to be attentive to children, to be a bit cautious indeed there, and not to make impulsive decisions when it comes to finances. Just think twice, check every single detail. Uh, don't be impulsive. And now we look at people who have sidereal ascendant cancer or moon in cancer, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Leo. Now for you, um, well, um, for you, you have, this is, this is not new for you, but you have this concentration of planets on your seventh house already <coughs> for quite, quite some times, quite some time, excuse me, <coughs> you're going through, well, maybe some challenges which are happening in your private life, also related to partnerships in general, a little bit, but Venus enters your sixth house to support your routine, to support your health. Um, so this will, be, this will be positive. The first rise of Venus for you um, will take place on the fifth house in November to give you a uh, desire to research deep, the secret, secret knowledge, to research the occult, to um, deepen your knowledge, to, to, to do some... Uh, talented work, craftsmanship. Oh, this is good activation of the fifth house. Also, mm, Mercury will be in the fourth with Mars. With Be responsible a little bit uh, when you come in. Be uh, not responsible, but be um, diplomatic at home, communicating with parents and people that you, that you live with. And a little bit careful at work because could be that also there uh, you go through certain disharmony. So be very diplomatic. Think twice, um, diplomatic before saying anything. But still, Venus is having this her very supportive role for you to support your routine and health from your sixth house. Be loving and patient with your partner. This is also a temporary period of Mars in on your fourth house, but it may bring these harmonies at home and at your career place. So be patient and indeed, um, well, not impulsive. And now we're looking at people who have ascendant sidereal ascendant Leo or moon in Leo, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be 
Virgo. Now for you, um, your ascendant ruler will be in on your third house with Mars, with visible uh, uh, Mercury after the second week of November. Very important becomes this third house for community for media work, communication, people abroad. Just avoid small disharmony. How true being very responsible for what you're saying to being very uh, diplomatic. So you may communicate with people abroad, you may do your media work, probably this will be uh, important, em emphasized on, but still uh, impulsiveness here could be, uh, could be the problem. So be very uh, diplomatic and very careful, and then you can have good results. Venus for you will try in your ascendant from Sagittarius, good for your games, good for your communication with children, good for your private life. So this is also very positive. You may be also very busy with uh, Saturn, Jupiter, be responsible for your health after, especially after Pluto enters also your sixth house. He can give you some small uh, health disharmony and after that you can also get the clue on how to deal with this, but in order to avoid any troubles, be also responsible for your health. And now we're looking for people who have sidereal ascendant, a Virgo or um, moon in Virgo, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Libra. Now, uh, in the first week of November, um, Mercury visible on your ascendant, very good for you, for your knowledge, for your awakening, for achieving what you want, for reaching the aims that you have. It's very good, especially when it involves knowledge, speech, eloquence. Then uh, your ascendant ruler enters, still visible, your second house to meet Mars and the sun. And actually then you have emphasis on a relationship with your family members, family roots, money would become important. And actually um, Mercury can be helpful there. It's like you have this impetus to, to, uh, to have financial ideas, plans, uh, you'll be driven towards this, but again, avoid being impulsive. And also um, this wouldn't be bad for your finances, but again, you need to be very organized and not impulsive also because of the square of Saturn. Be careful and um, attentive to children, for sure, with uh, Saturn and Pluto entering your fifth house. Um, other than that, I think that Venus in the fourth house is supporting your home, very helpful also for your career. So in this sense, you will be okay. And now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Libra or moon in Libra, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be uh, Scorpio. Now Mars invisible will be on your ascendant. This promises a little bit of disharmony on the, how you feel on your communication with uh, and relationship, romantic life relationship, relationships. So you may go through certain disharmony there. This is very possible therefore, uh, again, I will repeat the, the word impulsiveness also to you because Mars when invisible and fallen makes people to react fast, be impulsive and make decisions that later they regret for making. Therefore, be a very diplomatic, very loving. Uh, you, you have activation in not very positive aspect of this axis of your private life. So be a diplomatic uh, as much as you can, loving and so. This is one thing. But you do have the uh, sextile of Venus in your third house. She's supporting very good trying in your seventh house. So uh, on the other hand, she's giving the blessing, but still be careful. Be also careful for your career and home, uh, communication with parents, how communicate with superiors in particular. A bit and uh, yes, responsible for your health. Uh, also when you drive, when you take impulsive decisions for, imp for impulsive actions, count to 10. Uh, when you want to travel, prepare well. When you want to make surgery, also make sure that the date is appropriate. But especially when you want to, to travel or to negotiate, really be a little bit careful and make sure that you are very well prepared and very diplomatic. Now we look at people who have sidereal ascendant um, a Scorpio, moon in Scorpio, or if you're following the modern tropical astrology, this will be Sagittarius. Of course, Scorpio in November is important, always important, but now especially because of the eclipse on the 19th. Now, well, yes, this eclipse, but this is 
you are a little bit immune to these eclipses because I, I reminded you last year we had many, we had six, half of them happened on the same axis. So nothing new under the sun also for you, but um, still uh, make sure that you don't watch the eclipse, make sure that you're very um, well, that you, that you are fearless, that you don't allow any a melancholy to lead, to reach you. Just if you feel down, welcome the sun. Remain very strong because you have no reason to be afraid of anything. Health-wise, be responsible for your health, not only after the eclipse, but through the whole November. This is because your ascendant ruler is fallen in the 12th house and you need to be responsible for your health. You need to be uh, very careful with people, especially uh, because uh, of the nature of the placement of your ascendant ruler. Um, also, not appropriate very much November, not to travel, but to research, to do, to research the occult, to research the uh, secret knowledge. History is wonderful. Negotiations and travel, not. Financially, otherwise, the month will not be bad with Venus in your second house, visible Mercury in the 11th. I do think that you will be able to generate good incomes. Just be responsible for your health. Don't allow melancholy. Be careful with people so that they don't turn into enemies, especially hidden ones that you cannot predict um, their actions. And now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Sagittarius or moon in Sagittarius, or if you're looking from the modern astrological point of view, this will be Capricorn. Now for you, uh, luckily, you have Venus through the whole November on your ascendant. Well, she's not perfectly uh, powerful, but still it's a blessing. Venus on your ascendant, it's like you're immune to anything. You will be very well and you deserve it because you had heavy aspects for such a long time. So this will be very good for you. Financially good, support in your private life, good. So this is very good. Also. Mercury, uh, first week of um, November, enters your 11th house, quite fine for this is the house of gains, but be attentive with children, how you communicate with them. You may be very busy with plans, with friendships. This is also one thing. But in general, with Venus on the ascendant, you're pretty lucky uh, still. Uh, how you communicate with people, uh, be attentive with children. This is, this is important. And when you make financial decisions, also be, be, make sure that you're very well organized, very disciplined and not impulsive. But you may have opportunities, that's for sure. And now we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Capricorn or moon in Capricorn. Well, you have now Saturn and Jupiter on your ascendant already direct. Pluto is not yet on your ascendant. He will enter on the 4th of December. And this is quite important, but we'll be discussing this for the month of December. But well, you, are, you know what is going on because this is the case already for two years. And um, of course, Saturn, Jupiter on your ascendant are great change for you. Change for your plans, change for you, how you see the reality, change for your career choices, probably relationships, everything. This can touch pretty much everything in your life. Now, Mars invisible on your 10th house opposition with Uranus. We have here serious, maybe disharmony, which can cause some changes and disharmony at your career place. Also something that you can bring at home as well. So make sure that you more listen than maybe interfere and talk because Mars can be disharmonious, especially when it comes to communication with superiors. Um, however, also you'll be busy with this Mercury in his placement, you'll be busy. Health-wise, Venus will be very helpful. So I think that you will be well, but the main emphasis is to be careful, especially when it comes to career, um, communication with superiors, home as well and yes communication with um with your partner also they'll be a little bit careful but well this is temporary period and you will go through this um with the help of venus because after that in december she'll be on your ascendant and you will feel immediately better than now and now you have sidereal ascendant aquarius or moon in aquarius or if you're following the modern tropical astrology this will be Pisces, now 
your ascendant ruler, you know, already since April 2017 is in your third house. But this time we're looking at Uranus, of course, we look at Saturn too. But this time Mars in November is making opposition and squares your Saturn who is also ruling your ascendant. So this is pretty disharmonious. Therefore, be careful for um, invisible enemies, which would say how you communicate with children, with, with uh, people, with colleagues, whom you trust, whom you give your trust. So be very careful about that. Certainly you will be um, very much, um, well, you have serious activation of this axis of knowledge, third, ninth houses, desiring maybe, maybe to, to travel or to communicate with people abroad. Well, nothing wrong with that, but you need to be very uh, careful, diplomatic and not impulsive, just careful. I would avoid traveling with this particular configuration. Um, research, study, share your knowledge with others. This is brilliant. And the good thing is the savior for you, Venus on your 11th house, fine for communication with children, fine for your plans, fine for your gains, financially good. So after all, you'll be well. Just be responsible for your health. Make sure you uh, have a very healthy lifestyle and make sure that you don't make impulsive decisions, especially when it will be about traveling, negotiations, rather avoid temporary. Then we're looking at people who have sidereal ascendant Pisces or moon in Pisces, or for those who follow the modern tropical astrology, this will be Aries. Now, the whole November until 30th of November, Jupiter who rules you is on your 11th house. This is okay, but he is a bit weaker in uh, Capricorn, but with Saturn. So obviously financially, this is, this is fine for you, can make you very busy, but um, still be a little bit careful because Mars and Uranus make square to your ascendant ruler. Your financial decisions, the financial decisions that you make that are required to, that, that, that are um, related to partnerships or the money that your partner makes. Be careful a little bit there too, because you have activations of um, making money, but it is very important in what way you arrange your finances has to be very disciplined. Venus will be very helpful for your career because Venus in Sagittarius on your 10th house is very good. Mm, she respects the ascendant. She gives blessing to your career. So you'll be well, but you make sure that when it comes to finances, when it comes to the finances via partnership or the finances of your partner, make sure that you are very disciplined, very careful, very, if you want also time oriented, strict, because it will be important. Um, well, again, you're saved by Venus. I do think that you'll be well. Venus is training uh, Uranus who is squaring your ascendant rule, so it is okay. The energies will change very much after on the 30th of November, Jupiter moves into Aquarius. But for now, this is the situation. Just uh, also be careful how you communicate with family members because of Uranus um, in your second house. And yes, how you make financial decisions. So this was briefly, uh, for the 12 ascendants. Um, let's see what November will bring us. But in general, I think that um, it cannot be that bad and it will not be as bad as it was, it was in uh, 2020. It will be just um, a little bit darkness before the light comes and it will come for sure, for sure. Statistically, this is always the case. Astrologically, this is always the case. These are cycles also that we go through and also following the logical cycles, this is the logical, um, well, result exit of the situation. Yes, Wada. Thank you so much, Krasi. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Wada. Well, yeah, so you're doing next, uh, in a few days, you're doing your uh, Saturn talismans, because Saturn is very strong. Uh, Krasi will send me one and I'll test it for you guys and show it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You have to be careful with Saturn. <laughs> you have to be careful with Saturn. The interaction book. <laughs> yes, Saturn doesn't tolerate, he's like Pluto, doesn't tolerate a lie, doesn't tolerate lower, low uh, moral values. And then he can even be bad. So we have to be very 
disciplined and then such talisman can turn into miracle for us when we are disciplined, when we are maybe not that far disciplined, but just to be moral with people, with ourselves, you know, then, and this is actually not that, that hard when you know it, when you have the intention. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see how tasted, guys, if I'm still <laughs> In a few days. <laughs> well, if, you're, if you're alive, you will report. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oops. Thank you so much, Krasi. Have Pleasure. a great, have a great uh, month ahead. And let's see what that uh, witchy eclipse will bring <laughs> to all of us. Well, it takes a couple of years to see the results, but... Uh, yes, but don't watch it because this this can uh, you know oh every ancient culture even the Indians would tell you everyone don't sit and watch it because then you're really prone to the to accept something negative if if something negative exists so we have to be careful uh, we remind us every month with water don't expose your food to the eclipse don't eat during eclipse avoid yeah. these uh, risks. Yeah, light energy, keep it light, not too much food, not too much heavy substances. And, uh, yes. <laughs> thank, you, thank you so much, Krasi. Have a wonderful day and thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Everyone.